Hello, Geometors. Uh, today, we are going to go through section 5.4 and talk uh, about medians and altitudes. So I already filled in the vocabulary at the top here. So feel free to pause the video and uh, write down the definition of a median and the definition of a centroid. Um, so this should um, hopefully be in line with we introduced this and did an activity yesterday. So, um, but go ahead and pause and then when you come back to the video, I'll sketch a picture and, and sort of remind you on what we did yesterday. Okay, so on a median, so if I were to just draw a triangle over here, so again, a median goes from a vertex to the opposite midpoint. So we, we know we have a median if you see those markings on the diagram. And so you're, you can draw a second one. And of course, that will probably create, of course, the sides are going to be probably different. So that's why I put double marks instead of single. And then your third one. So you have this diagram. These are, these are midpoints, and then this middle point here is the centroid. So um, when I've got here that it's the point of concurrency, so, whoops, remember the word concurrency means where they all come together. Okay, so this um, theorem in the middle is what we did with our measuring activity. So the theorem says that um, the medians of a triangle intersect at a point, that is two-thirds the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So let me get a different color here. <laughs> okay, so what that means is from the vertex to the centroid in pink here, that is my two-thirds portion. So here's what I want you to, to know is it, that's my two-thirds portion. Maybe I'll do this one in green. This one is going to be the one-third portion because, of course, two-thirds and one-third have to add up to be one whole part. So what it says here is if I take the um, entire length of my median. So in this picture, A to E is the total, total median. So if I multiply that by two-thirds, I get the piece of the median from A to P, which is the two-thirds section, okay? So yesterday I talked, I really encourage you to try to do this in your head by breaking things into thirds, all right? But I will set it up, I guess, as more of an equation like this if you're more comfortable with that. Okay, so number one. Uh, in triangle ABCD, D is the centroid, okay, so that means I can use this um, two-third, one-third rule. Um, so BD is 12, which is already labeled for us, okay, so this section is 12. I want to find two other lengths. So step one, you need to identify is that the two-third or the one-third piece. And so from the vertex to the centroid is the two-thirds piece. All right, so um, I need DG, I'll do red. I need this piece, okay, that's the one-third piece. So what you could do is if, if you want to, you can set up this diagram if you are having a hard time getting to the answer quickly. If two-thirds of this is 12, that means each of those sections is six because I just filled in two of the three pieces. And those two pieces have to be equal, so they're six, which makes this one six. So if I need the one in red here is the one-third portion, each of these is a third. So my answer for the one-third portion is six. Okay, so DG is six. And then BG goes from the vertex to the other side. That's the entire median. All right, so you could either take 6 times 3, or we could add together the 12 and the 6 to get our answer. Okay, so either way, sorry, either way we get 18. Okay, so however you thought through that, that would be fine. So breaking it into thirds. 
The other way you could do this is you could say, you could say that um, B to D. So this is the two thirds piece is equal to two thirds of the entire segment, which is B G. Okay, so if you want to do it like this, you have to get your bearings on the proportion of the median to the centroid is two thirds of the total. So now if I know BD, I know that 12 is on the diagram. Now I can pretend BG is X. So if you want to, you could like solve this equation. And when you solve it, you're going to either divide both sides by two-thirds or multiply by three-halves. So you should get 18 as your answer. Okay, so you can plug it in that way. Um, I feel like that's a little bit more complicated, but to each their own. So you just need to make sure that you're comfortable with a method. Okay, um, let's go on to the um, graph at the bottom. All right. Uh, the vertices of ABC are given, A, B, and C. Find the coordinates of the centroid. So go ahead and plot those ordered pairs. All right, zero, zero. Four, ten. So that'll be way up here. So I got A, B, and then eight, two. Okay. A, B, C. Okay, so I need the centroid. So here's what I want to come back and think about. I wish I had a pointer here. Um, okay, so I want to think about, let me go back to the top here. I want to think about um, where my, uh, what a median is, okay? So they are considered midpoints. So what we could do is I could, what I could do here is I could find the three midpoints. And then if I connect them and create medians, wherever they intersect is the centroid. And so that might be my approach on this one is I wanna calculate or find the three midpoints, okay? So remember midpoint formula, you're going to add, the x's divide by 2 and then add the y's divide by 2 all right so let me maybe switch over here so let's for let's first work on a the midpoint of a b i'm going to say here mid okay so i'm going to do add the x's so 0 plus 4 divided by 2 and then add the y's, zero plus 10 divided by two. So it looks like I will get four divided by two is two, 10 divided by two is five. So plot that, two, one, two, three, four, so right there. Okay, so that's the midpoint of AB. Um, let's do the midpoint of um, maybe BC. So add the x's divided by two. So 4 plus 8 divided by 2, and then 10 plus 2 divided by 2. So 4 and 8 is 12 divided by 2 is 6. 10 plus 2 is 12 divided by 2. Okay, so it looks like 6 comma 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my lines were a little crooked, so um, I would... That's why I'm glad I'm doing the actual midpoint calculation on this one. Okay, and then my final point here would be a C. All right, so zero plus eight divided by two, add the X's, add the Y's, zero plus two, oops, divided by two. So that is gonna be four and one. One, two, three, four, one, okay. So now if I connect, and if you have a ruler, probably be better than what I'm getting ready to do without a ruler. Um, but, oops, sorry. Um, I am gonna go from A, I'll do my best to draw super straight. And then from here to here, okay? 
So it looks like my centroid is right there. So coordinates. So we'll call that point P. So it looks like it's at one, two, three, four. And then it's one, two, three, four, comma, four. So that's one way to do that. Um, and since you're on a grid, you probably could be relatively um, precise with your uh, segments um, by using a straight edge or a ruler. Okay, let's move on to one more example. So I'd like you to do example three. Um, I would like you to look at what you're given here. And will you go ahead and do both parts, do part one and two. So pause the video here, because I'm getting ready to talk about it. I want you to try it first on your own and then come back. Okay, um, I think all of this is labeled. So that's where I would have started. So I need RU. So when I'm looking at RU, um, this is the two thirds portion. So two is the one third portion. So if I have the one third portion, that means all of them are two. And if I need the two thirds portion, I can just double that. So RU is gonna be four units. And then if I do the uh, whole thing, oh wait, 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 hold on. That's wrong, let me back up. That is gonna actually be RS. So scrap that, let's back up there. So um, I used the wrong letters, but I was using the right idea. So R to U, I'm sorry, R to S is the two thirds portion. So I'm just gonna grab two of these. So R S, I did that one first, is four. Now R U is the whole thing. Okay, so from R to U, so I could just add together four and two. Okay, because if I know this is four and the other's two, I'd probably just add those together. That's usually what I would do. Um, you could have done RU first. I chose to do the two thirds portion first. Okay, so find the perimeter of PQR. Um, so PQR, P, so I'm gonna outline it. Oh, that's the whole, I'm sorry, that's the whole triangle. I was thinking it was maybe an interior triangle. Okay, so remember that the medians are midpoints. All right, so I know that if that T is the midpoint, so both of them are three. Along PQ, if I see a five, the other one is five. And then along RQ, these are both five. So I simply wanna add these, one, two, three, four, five, six numbers together. All right, so I'm gonna just do P for perimeter. So if you add all that together, you would get 26. Okay, so that will take into account the midpoint reasoning. Okay, one more thing here, and there's not much attention drawn to this one, and we're just going to briefly talk about it, but not really do a whole lot with it. Um, there is one more triangle center, the altitudes. So, first of all, we need to know what an altitude is. So an altitude is really the height of your triangle um, when you are doing area, okay? So if I were to uh, sketch my altitude, and it says it over there to the right, the altitude is simply a segment from a vertex that's perpendicular to the opposite side. It doesn't do anything else but make a right angle. It doesn't cut it in half. It doesn't do anything like that. So it is a perpendicular segment from a vertex to the opposite side. So if you put all three of them on a triangle, it makes the orthocenter, all right? And so if we look at this picture um, right here in the middle, um, when all of them come together, when you have all of your um, altitudes come together and intersect, that's called the orthocenter. So there's really no other property other than the name, okay? Um, so all I want you to really know is that when all three altitudes come together, it makes a point called the orthocenter. Um, if we were to go even further in depth on the four triangle centers, the four together have a relationship, but really all we're doing is talking about what it's called. So there's no example that goes with it. The only other thing that does go with it is where the orthocenter is located, 
All right, so sometimes it's located um, inside, on, or outside. So similar to your circumcenter, if it is an acute triangle, it's located inside the triangle. If it's a right triangle, it's located on the triangle. If it's obtuse, it's outside. So we will uh, talk a little bit more about that. Goodness, when we review. Um, but for now, like I said, please just take away from this. The altitudes make the orthocenter. And then down here, sometimes they land in, on, or outside. Okay, that's it for medians and altitudes. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.